believing in what we're doing, and I promise you, this won't be the last one. Let's go, Matt. Here we go. Three, two, three, one, two, three. Hey. Welcome to the Bet MGM studio and Titans football with Brian Callahan, presented by SeatGeek. I'm Mike Keith. The Titans are coming off their bye weekend, a time where everyone associated with the club got some time off. Before the team broke for their days off, head coach Brian Callahan addressed the team. Here's what I'll tell you, fellas. It's a hell of a job. We all know that there's plenty of things to clean up when you win or you lose. It's all the same, right? It's all the same. There's definitely things that we need to do better in all three phases, all right? and we have to clean those things up. And at the end of the day, have we have we won anything but one game? That's it. All right? we, gave, we gave ourselves a great chance to go win. We went 1-0 this week. You guys do everything you were asked to do. Every goal on both sides, really all three phases, I think we checked almost every box on how we were going to win the game. So that's a hell of a job. That's executing the plan. That's practicing the right way. Right? That's how you win. That's how you win. All right? But the main key is we're on a mission right now. Right. And we got some confidence, and you guys did a great job doing everything we've asked you to do. Enjoy yourselves. Take some time. All right, and I'll see you guys when you get back uh, on Monday morning. That's all I got. From that team meeting to right now, here's head coach Brian Callahan. Brian, the team came back for a full day of work yesterday, uh, a Monday that you don't normally have. What did you hope to accomplish in that practice? I'll get them moving around. Back to, back to the football um, rhythm, if you will. So we got a chance to, to work and to get a few things physically done. Uh, small introduction to Indianapolis, get us ahead just a touch, but uh, for the most part, just about getting back, working a little bit after a handful of days off and being ready to roll for a, a big divisional game this weekend. We want to hit a couple of other post by topics in this segment known as Callahan On. First up, take a look at this super interaction between defensive lineman Jeffrey Simmons and Tavondre Sweat on the sidelines in the win at Miami. His arm just sitting there though, that's what I'm saying. Right. Did I not tell you that? No, I was not I was that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. If he gonna just sit there and give you his hands, back up on the ball and run. Don't work no move. You go run your big through him. I'm telling you, then guess what? Now he's going to be like, oh, they booing me. He, oh, he, take, he just takes, now he's not working on no move. They know you're going to come out the ball and try to swipe their hand. That's why he giving you that. It's always bag up, especially in sync. That'd be real. Bag up and push the out. Then you start working your I told you what he was going to do. I backed up. I know. But I told you what he's going to do, though. He quit. He quit. But he can't handle power. He, not a, he don't like power. That's good stuff. Brian, when you see a moment like that on your sideline, what sticks out to you? Uh, that's the type of team that we want to be. And those are the type of players we want to be around. And I think that's what's great is you get a guy like Jeff who's seen so much football, being able to impart some of that wisdom on, on Tavondre and being a part of his development too. That happens across the, uh, the whole team. That, that's a great interaction to capture, but that's what our whole sideline is like. Uh, most games is guys talking and communicating, um, which are really important parts of having a good football team is that ability to communicate uh, in the moment and knowing what the other guy wants the other guy to do. But it just shows you what Jeff's as a leader and, and a, uh, the, the head of that defensive line in terms of the, the vet presence in there. Uh, he's been fantastic, and that's a really cool snapshot of, of what he brings to our team. Okay, let's take a look at another topic. Last night, Coach Ron Rivera, who's now part of NFL Network, joined Amy Wells and me on Titans Radio. Week five finally saw a big number of big passing numbers around the NFL. We asked Coach Rivera if the offenses have finally caught pass defenses that dominated September. Well, you know, it's interesting because when, when we, we started the season out, I kind of thought there was going to be a resurgence of the running game, partly because if you look at how some of these defenses are built, they're all being built to stop the throwing game. Um, and so you got lighter players out there. You got more DBs on the field. Um, so it was it was set up to run the football, in my opinion. And we saw that in, in, in the first four games. You're right, though. This week five kind of turned out to be a little bit different. But I also think certain situations necessitated that. And that is when teams were stocking up for the run, now what happened was it opens up the passing game. When you only see those single high DBs back there, you know, single high safeties. 
pecking and they're throwing the ball vertical or they're hitting a seam and next thing you know it's a big play. Early on, it was in vogue to play some form of cover two, whether it be cover two, quarters, trap, whatever, to stop the passing game so people ran. Now you see things happening in a different fashion. A great example as far as <clears throat> that's concerned is you look at the commanders. You know, what, what, what they're doing with their young quarterback, for the most part, has been brilliant. And what's happened is teams are playing a lot of zone against these guys, and they're trying to keep their eyes on the quarterback. Because of that, the receivers have more cushion. They have more opportunity to get open quickly. Thus, jaden has been – he's been throwing the ball, getting it out of his hands, and his receivers are making plays once they've caught the ball. So now teams start tightening up against them, playing a little bit more man, and what's happened? They're running the ball better, okay? And that quarterback's running the ball much better. Why? Because DBs, they've got their backs turned them. So it's, it's a little bit of give and take. And, and as you go through it, offenses that recognize what the defense is trying to do against them sooner are the ones that are having a lot more success. Ron Rivera from NFL Network. Is he spot on? That's a, that's a man that's seen a lot of football, uh, both as a player and a coach. And, yeah, I think that that sounds – about right. It's, it's a cat and mouse game between offenses and defenses um, through the whole early part of the season. Uh, and it still ebbs and flows as the season carries on. And uh, you see teams trying to run the ball more uh, early in the part of the season. And then you see some defenses trying to tighten that down a bit. So yeah, there's a lot of truth to what he said um, and how the defenses and offenses have ebbed and flowed. Uh, you saw obviously an explosion this week, a little bit more points, a little bit more passing than um, the last handful. So yeah, pretty astute observations from a man that, that knows football about as good as anybody out there. When we continue with Titans football with Brian Callahan, we review Titans tape on a defensive play that helped win the Miami game. Stay with us. Welcome back to Titans football with Brian Callahan presented by SeatGeek. Last Tuesday at our Titans tape segment, we showed you one of the big offensive plays from the win at Miami eight days ago. Tonight, we look at one of the biggest defensive plays from that victory. This one occurred early in the fourth quarter as Miami chooses to go for it on fourth and one at their own 39. Take it away, coach. Well, first things first, you know that they're, this is a, a perimeter run team and a, and a C-gap run team, which means they're, they're trying to stress this part of our defense. And what you see here is that exact thing happening. So really aggressive call by Denard. We have a, a, a six-man front, essentially a six-one front, if you will, with you know these six guys here and our one linebacker here. And what ends up happening is Denard calls a corner blitz from the field to try to knock out all right, any perimeter game. So really anything that's coming at the perimeter is going to get turned back inside. Not a lot of people want to run on the interior of our defensive line right now. So you see what happens there is they end up calling a play to get to the perimeter. Jarvis pressures off the edge. And now you have both Harold and Jarvis set in the edge. And really great job by the defensive line up front. So now you have the ball is not going anywhere. We have now since bottled any perimeter run, and we're forcing this ball back inside to really Ernest Jones in here and our defensive line. And what you see is really Ernest doing a great job of beating the block. And we'll go to the end zone to see the other part of it. And then a great job by Lynch uh, defeating his block on the tight end and retreating to make the play. And so just – to highlight here, Ernest at 53 all right, and Lynch right there uh, inside. And you can see edge gets set, forced. But the great part about this is the effort by Lynch. He's getting blocked. They initially went on the block. He's blocked here. They're assigned. All this guy's got to do is block this guy. And essentially, this ball should have a chance to get a one yard for a first down. But Ernest recognizes it, reads it, and reacts. And then you get great second effort by Lynch, right, chasing down this play, as you see here. So just one more time, just to see the effort involved and the speed in which Ernest diagnoses and reacts to the run. He's not missing that tackle. No, he doesn't miss many tackles. No. And uh, that's a, you know, that's a, that's a, big, that's a huge stop. We, we treat fourth and ones like turnovers. Um, we had two fourth and one stops in that game, so it feels like you get, you know, three turnovers on the game total plus a safety. Um, so really an awesome performance by our defense and particularly in a short yardage situation like that, knowing with the call what was coming, executing, and then when you're free in the hole, making the tackle with great effort behind and it. And you get points after that. And that's, that's exactly right. Super job by the defense. Miami, as he mentioned, 0 for 2 on fourth down tries in the game eight days ago.
When Titans football with Brian Callahan continues, some Titans standouts head back to school, actually schools, to provide some books and meet some outstanding students. We continue next. Welcome back to the Bet MGM studio as Titans football with Brian Callahan continues, presented by SeatGeek. When, serve, entertain. That's the organization's mission. And recently, quarterback Will Levis and linebacker Kenneth Murray joined T-Rack and Titans cheerleaders to deliver books to not one, but two Metro Nashville elementary schools. The visit is this week's SeatGeek Sound. Enjoy. What up, what up, what up, what up, what up, what up? What's up, guys? It's Will Levis. We are out here at Cumberland Elementary with some teammates here to hand out some books. Just enough. My last one. Here we go. You're welcome. We're all about literacy, and so just any opportunity to get more books in the hands of our boys and girls is just an awesome opportunity. But then for them to see champions of our city, the Titans, just warm my heart. So we just are elated for any opportunity for our community to be a part of the teaching and learning here at our school. You gonna share? Nope. <laughs> no. High five. Whoa. <laughs> I hope you like the new book. It's a good one. I'm sure you guys do your reading, okay? You promise me? Uh, you know, anytime you get to get in the community and uh, just connect with people, especially kids like this, how much they look up to you and how much of an impact you can make on them, uh, just try to take advantage of those opportunities when you can. Oh my gosh, today was so much fun. <laughs> There you go. And our kiddos just being excited to see them, excited to get books, and you know, and they just thought that was like the biggest win. Like that seat geek sound. Brian, various groups of Titans players go into the community every Tuesday. What do you hope your players get out of that experience? that they understand the platform that they have and the difference they can make. And you, you see just from the kids and the, the excitement, the experience, that's, that's a, something that can, that's very small for them and just requires a little bit of time but can make a huge impact uh, on one of those kids or multiple uh, of those kids in those moments. And so that's what you hope that they understand how much they can do good for our, the kids in the community uh, and to keep doing it as, at every turn possible because it's, uh, it's really cool to see our guys do those things. And they will never Forget it. The young people I speak of. Never. They'll remember the day the Titans came to their school. They'll tell that story for a long time. They'll tell that story forever. Up next, the epic Western genuine article. Spoiler alert, it's about Titans, most of whom you've never heard of. We will formally introduce you after this. The Tennessee Titans have a team that you can count on. Actually, more than one. You know about the team on the field, but I'm going to tell you about the one off the field in this week's Epic Western Genuine article. Titans employees are totally committed to helping people and volunteer hundreds of hours per year in the community. Recently, Titans employees teamed up with folks from various teams around Nashville for a food packaging event at Second Harvest Food Bank. This is hard work that makes a difference. The type of hard work that Titans employees commit to doing multiple times per year. We're very excited. We're here with our friends at the Nashville Predators, Nashville Soccer Club, and Nashville Sounds, and we're here to do a sorting event for Second Harvest Food Bank. Lay flat on top of the mill. If you don't have any at your station, feel free to grab some more. These service events are so important to us. It's a big part of our mission statement, being win, serve, entertain. Service is a key piece of that. It's a fun time for our employees to get together, to bond across uh, service lines, across departments that we don't always get together. And where are you originally from? Oklahoma. Okay. Yeah. Canned goods. Okay. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> 
It's such a, a beautiful act of community to see everybody come together. Seeing the sounds and the titans and the soccer club and the Preds all come together working to fulfill a common mission of helping our neighbors in need, it's, it's huge. Yeah, um, we are more than just a football team. When we support Nashville, we make Nashville better. We make Tennessee better. We make ourselves better in turn. It's really important to support causes that are near and dear to the Titans, but also to our fans and to our players. And it is that giving back of the community does so much for us, and it feels really good when we can give back to them as well. Nice stuff right there. Brian Shannon Myers had some important things to say, and creating that synergy throughout Ascension St. Thomas Sports Park, whether it's the football team or the business side, it adds up in creating a winning culture, not just doing the right thing as that group was there. Yeah, I've always believed that any time that you have an organization that does all the things right in all facets of it, usually tends to have a product on the field that uh, is of the winning brand. And uh, with the, the amount that people put into this community and the amount that uh, our organization is aligned in, in terms of its, uh, its goals, its vision uh, for what the future brings for, for the football team and for the organization, uh, it makes coming to work every day fantastic. And it's, you, just, you feel it in the building when people are all on the same page about the shared vision and where we're headed and why we're doing the things that we do uh, in the community. So it's, uh, it's comforting and it's exciting when you have that kind of alignment in your organization. That's really, really good stuff. We get a preview of this week's opponent, AFC South foe Indianapolis, when Callahan's first look gives us, well, what it says. The first look, next. Callahan's first look is presented by Nissan. Indianapolis in town to face the Titans on Sunday. We could see Joe Flacco at quarterback. He threw for 359 yards this past Sunday in Jacksonville. Or we might see second-year quarterback Anthony Richardson, who's trying to come back from a hip pointer. Richardson is big, he's fast, and he can throw the football as far as any NFL quarterback needs to. Where does your defense's challenges begin, Brian, if Indy goes with Richardson? Well, he, he's got such dynamic ability with the ball in his hand, and you have to make sure you're assigned right for the quarterback run game, um, all the different ways they use him in that facet. And then on top of it, he's big, strong, and fast, and he can make huge plays off schedule and outside of the pocket. Um, on top of being able to throw really from anywhere on the field, a really, really dynamic player. Um, again, just hasn't been healthy for long stretches, but man, he is really special to watch. 6'4", 245. People don't realize he's that big and that fast. Well, no matter who Indianapolis plays at quarterback, that player has several outstanding receivers, Josh Downs, the speedy slot, and then the larger targets. Big time Michael Pittman and big play Alec Pierce. How do those guys stress an opposing secondary? Well, it's a well-built receiver room. Um, they all have different talents and unique ways to be used. You see they all have different skill sets and they have speed, they have possession, they have size, they have strength. Um, they got guys that have quickness and suddenness and, and they're all homegrown. They're all their own, they, they're all draft picks and players that uh, they've built around, but uh, made a lot of plays, made a lot of tough catches. Uh, both Pittman and, and Pierce are, are fantastic. And uh, yeah, they, they stress your defense all the way around because of the versatility and the dynamic difference in skill sets of the group. So uh, yeah, we have our hands full this week. It's crazy with Pierce right now. I think he's averaging like 27 <laughs> yards a catch or something ridiculous like that. Explosive. He's... Yeah, explosive to say the least. When one starts discussing the Indianapolis Colts defense, you got to start with their linebackers. And I'm talking about number 44, Zaire Franklin, number 45, EJ Speed. They are two of the leading tacklers in the entire NFL. Why are Franklin and Speed so disruptive? They do such a great job within their scheme. Uh, they know how to play the defense. They have a ton of confidence uh, in, in the scheme and what's asked of them. Uh, and then on top of that, they got great physical gifts. They can both run sideline to sideline. They're very physical, but you can see what sets them apart uh, is their intelligence and operation in, in within the scheme where they can go trigger and make tackles. Uh, they know how to defend the pass. They know what passing concepts give them stress. Um, they're a really, really good linebacker tandem in a scheme that fits their skill sets very well. 
If you don't get those guys accounted for, play's probably not going to work, right? They are hard to get accounted for. I mean, <laughs> it's hard for those offensive linemen to go block them. They're really good. All right, that's Callahan's first look presented by Nissan. The Colts will be in Nashville this Sunday to battle the Titans at Nissan Stadium. You can listen to the broadcast on Titans Radio. Our coverage begins with Titans Countdown at 11 a.m. Central. Kickoff set for 12.02. Titans Colts this Sunday on Titans Radio. For Brian Callahan, I'm Mike Keith. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next week.